Welcome to The Sword on the Trial, a podcast of Founders Ministries. Founders Ministries exists for the recovery of the gospel and the reformation of churches. I'm Jared Longshore. I'm Tom Askell. Well, we've come to the end of the year, Tom. Actually, it's the beginning of a new year. Is it the beginning of well, a new almost. year? Almost. We're kind of in that in between. We're not stage. quite there. This no, is the no. last podcast of the year. That's right. Last, last one of 2020. I know. It's been a wonderful year, and we have much that we want to reflect upon today as we consider the year behind us and as we venture out upon the year ahead. But uh, before we get into that, we would love to invite you to our Founders Conference coming up January 20th through the 24th. Right. We just have a few seats left. Uh, so if you're thinking about coming, <laughs> encourage you to come, get in on that. We look forward to seeing you there. It's going to be a wonderful time. We've got lots of things planned in addition to the actual conference itself. So we've got a dinner on Friday night. It's just $15. You do need to pre-register for that, get your tickets for that. And we're going to be talking about what Founders has done over the last year, where we're going in 2021 and the years ahead, which are some wonderful things happening. The Institute of Public Theology, which we announced a couple of weeks ago, a uh, tremendous response to that, by mm -hmm. the way. So uh, God willing, we're going to open registration for that in a few months and have classes in the fall. Uh, we got Vody Balkum uh, who will be preaching. We got James Dolezal. You'll be there. I'll be there. Yes. Chad Vegas. Yeah. And there's a pre-conference on Wednesday. And yeah. So we'd right. love for you to come to that. You do need to register for that. It is free, but we ask that you register so we have an idea on our space and kind of what, uh, as we make preparations for it. The title of that pre-conference is Above All Earthly Powers, Courage for Christ in the Public Square. Yeah. And you're certainly going to need that. Uh, we've always needed that. But we see in the times in which we live that you're going to need that in increasing measure. And so uh, Vody Bakken will be there for that pre-conference. You will. And then we're going to have like a panel discussion, Q&A time. It's just going to be a great time. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yes. You also have uh, just a few days left of our December sale. So 25% off everything that is in the bookstore or everything that is in the founder's store. And that is uh, through the very end of the year. So 25% off. And then one of the books in there is the book that we recently published, you and I, called yeah. Strong and Courageous, Following Jesus Amid the Rise of America's New Religion. And we try to detail what we see is a, a new religion, a new faith commitment that is uh, pervasive and increasing in American life, and then really provide some solutions for how we are to live faithfully. Yeah, and that's on pre-sale, uh, which is cheaper, I think, than the 25% off. And uh, the pre-sales have been pretty good on that. We're, we're great grateful for it. We think it's an important book. We've tried to address these things from our own confessional understanding background and tried to uh, address it as pastors. We're dealing with real people, real life situations. And so I, I hope the book will have a useful life. It looks like it's already being well received by those who have read the early editions of yeah. it and given us feedback. So we're grateful for it. Amen. Well, when you come to the end of the year, uh, you have an opportunity to reflect on uh, the last year, God's grace in it, uh, the challenges that were there. And uh, it's a wonderful time to consider the end of things, teach us to number our days that uh, as the year has come to an end, one day we too will come to an end and we can reflect back on God's goodness and we can reflect back on our own sin and our own finitude and uh, try to resolve that as we set a sail for another year that we would do so by grace through faith. Um, I really enjoy reading the Valley of Vision. One of the prayers is called A Prayer for Years In. Let me just read you a portion of it. I was meditating on this recently. Um, it says, in spite of my hard heart, ingratitude, distrust, thy goodness has been with me another year, leading me through a twisting wilderness in retreat, helping me to advance when beaten back, making sure headway. Thy goodness will be with me in the year ahead. I hoist sail and draw up anchor with thee as the blessed pilot of my future as of my past. Mm, amen. That was a wonderful <laughs> meditation, especially the, um, the twisting wilderness. I mean, what was 2020 other than a twisting wilderness, you know, and, uh, even personally for us, uh, especially for you with your collapse of just over a year ago and your recovery, but, um, even the broader challenges in evangelicalism yeah. and the threats that have come upon the church and the Christian community and then civilly nationally, just, it, it certainly has been a twisting wilderness. And then the, I've seen this principle in retreat, uh, helping us to advance, to yeah. actually being able to gain ground amid uh, what has been more of a broad retreat. Yeah. And that's a great thing to remember. You know, there it's the way of the Christian life I and mean, it's the way of our faith, because if you look at the cross, I mean, the cross looks like a disaster from mm -hmm. just a human standpoint. I mean, here is this leader of this new movement, this man that has taken disciples amongst himself for 
three years, trained them, and now then, their, all their hopes and dreams are being crushed on a Roman cross. And yet in that moment, God is doing his deepest work. He is redeeming the world to himself. I mean, this is, this is the way of Christ. And so when we suffer, when we experience setbacks, when it looks like everything is chaotic, we have no reason to believe that God is in any less control than at those moments when all is bright and glorious and we can see it and quantify it. No, he is working. He's got a purpose. He's going to fulfill that purpose. We are a part of the way he's going to fulfill it. And we need to play our role to the best of our ability and never throw up the white flag, n- never go down in defeat and just say, well, all's hopeless. No, it's not. Mm. No, it's not. God's always working. And he has told us that his purposes will never fail. That's true subjectively for me as a Christian. So he who began a good work in me will bring it to completion. And it is true uh, more broadly, objectively for the whole created order that he's working all things together according to the counsel of his own will. Mm. There's, there's no random atoms here. There's no misfires here. God's using opposition. He's using what appear to be significant setbacks for the purpose of bringing about his ultimate goal. Yeah, and the, you know, as you mentioned that about Christ, kind of the way down is the way up. He went to the cross, and that looks like a disaster in so many ways, and it did to Peter. And he made a great error there, which we're tempted to make today. Mm-hmm. And Peter says, what are you talking about? You're not going to go die. You, know, yeah. you, you must be crazy here. And what's the rebuke from Christ? He says, get behind me, Satan. Mm-hmm. You have in mind the things of man, not the things of God. And you say, well, Peter understood that, you know, going to a cross and dying is kind of like the end. He understood <laughs> that, that, that he was looking at um, a, a certain dimension of that cross, right. really, you know. And so, and similarly, you have kind of Christian leaders right now who get to the end of this year and they see some real challenges ahead. You know, there's people saying, what about our tax exempt status? What about um, the, the challenges that are going to come and the fears that are going to be in the people and the kind of uh, overreach is coming from our government and they're watching the continual crumbling of Western civilization and their concern. And the tendency can think we can be, well, you know, we're just going to lose. Mm-hmm. We're just going to lose. Mm-hmm. And uh, w- there's a parallel there. You can hear Christ say, you know, you know, get behind me, Satan. You have in mind the things of man. That's yeah. the problem. You're you're looking you're looking at it through the lens of mere man. You're yeah. not um, you're not having in mind the things of God that this is the way God has always worked. So I, I don't know what 2021 is going to look like. I, I can't tell you. I mean, I had no idea that 2020 <laughs> would look the way it did when we sat at the end of last year. Yeah. But I do know that God is on the throne, and I do know that His kingdom is going to continue to advance. I do know that He's going to continue to sanctify His people. And so I say, well, praise the Lord. The yeah. same God that led us through the last year is going to lead us through the coming year. Amen. And th- this is a, a just a basic principle of Christian living, that when everything seems to be uh, falling apart around us, you know, change and decay and all around I see, O oh, thou who changest not, uh, abide with me. So we need to remember when things change all around us, there are unchanged things all around us as mm. well. And this is 2 Corinthians 4 at the end of that chapter where Paul tells us that we must look not only to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. It's as we do that, that we will not be destroyed. As we do that, we will not be dispirited. We will be renewed. We will be uh, invigorated. We will be given the strength to weigh these uh, momentary trials as light because we know that there is an exceeding weight of glory that's being worked in us through them. So with that, what do we do? Well, our marching orders haven't changed. We're to go into the world and make disciples. And that's true whether uh, all the freedoms that we've enjoyed in this nation are taken away in a moment or whether we have multiplied freedoms that are protected uh, even more so than we've experienced thus far. We are people under authority. Our God rules. Our God has given us his son to redeem us. And in the name of that son, we go forth. And we can't be distracted. We can't uh, somehow alter our fundamental way of thinking and living because of circumstances that change. The circumstances can restrict us or put us in a a different situation than maybe what we're used to or what we would choose. But our ultimate purpose, our ultimate um, orders from on high 
don't change at all. Yeah. You know, the, all the talk about a new normal, there's, there's a, they want that new normal to be uh, yeah. without faith. That's what, that's what I believe is really happening. There's this great um, change into the new normal mm-hmm. and that new normal doesn't uh, concern a robust Christian life. Right. It doesn't concern faith in God and obedience to God. So uh, we have great reason to hope though, as we've articulated already, but now let's take it one layer down. We're really reflecting on the last year. There are many, many challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, think that you could say it's been like a great win for Christianity over the last year. Uh, you recently tweeted out, uh, if 2020 were a test, evangelicalism failed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what do you mean by that? What really, where, where are the, um, where are the F's assigned? And then we can think about what we're going to need to do to prep for the year to come. Yeah. Well, I, I think what happened on, on two levels, one with the uh, massive inroads and the exposure of the inroads of these ideologies that we've been talking about, you know, the intersectionality, critical theory, all of that, that didn't just arise in 2020. It's been there for not just decades, but even as Carl Truman says in his recent book, it's been going on for centuries. We've just come to see the fruit of it in these most uh, recent ideological expressions that so many evangelical churches and leaders have just been ill-prepared to deal with that. We've been swept along with it so that our church has been caught up in it and we've been easily played by those who have imbibed it and have then used those ideologies to begin to dictate to Christians and to churches how we ought to live, what we ought to see, what reality is. We're being told this is what's real and you have to accept this. And if you don't, well, then you're a bigot. If you don't, then you really don't love your neighbor. So that's one. But another, uh, and not just in America, we've seen this in other places around the world as well, but of course we live in America, is what's happened with governmental overreach in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And of course, Man, early on in March, it was unknown. So a lot of fear, and this is going to result in millions of deaths. And we've got to uh, do what we got to, whatever we can in order to restrict the spread of this. So two weeks to flatten the curve. You remember that? That seems like a myth. Yeah, 15, 15 days. Is it 15 days up yet? Yeah, that's right. So that was in March. And, you know, we agree. We say, okay, we don't know what we're dealing with here. God's given us governmental authorities. We don't know what they know. And we're going to you know, respect them, listen to them. And then as we did that, it was another 15 days, another month. And then they're telling us, hey, you can't travel. But then everybody, all the government officials are traveling. Governor Newsom says, you know, you got to stay home. Don't go to restaurants. And then he gets photographed at a restaurant. And, and Dr. Burke says, you know, stay home for Thanksgiving, that she travels with her family for Thanksgiving. And it doesn't take a genius to say, you know, wait a minute, you know, is there something else working here besides uh, real concern for public health? And when you've got a government that slaughters upwards to a million babies a year, telling us they really are concerned about their citizens and trying to protect our health, there ought to be uh, a pause in the mind of any thinking person that says, are they really shooting straight with us? Are they coming at us with uh, objective fact and truth and genuine concern? And so many Christian leaders, I mean, I've been embarrassed, quite honestly, by some of them who have just said, well, Romans 13, so no, we're not going to meet. The governor says we can't meet, so we're not going to meet. You know, the governor says we got to stay home. We got to stay home. Governor says we got to wear masks. We're going to wear masks without any objective evaluation on what's being said to us. But simply because it's being said by someone in governmental authority, we assume since they've not commanded us to go out and commit adultery, that we've got to do what they say. Mm -hmm. And this whole lack of awareness of the spheres of authority, which God has ordained for the people he places in authority has exposed the shallowness of much of our Christian thinking in the evangelical world. You know, I think some of that is the Christian leaders, that there has been a lack of leadership and they, 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 they want the government to give those mask mandates and to give those no, no more, no more than 10 people because it gets them off the hook Mm. because here you are as a leader and you got to decide what to do. What's going to be the culture around here. Are we going to let people be free and say, you know, Hey, if if you, if you don't want to come, you know, if you're afraid, then, then don't come. And if you just think you've got some rationale for why you shouldn't come, don't come. If you want to wear a mask, wear one. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear one. You know, if you want some more distance, you can find some space or whatever, but are though there's, there were hard decisions to make Mm -hmm. and we're, we become so pragmatic in the way that we think we know, well, if we take some of these lines, if we, if we operate according to what general revelation actually 
seems to be the case, which would be a lot of freedom. And, um, well, then we might get in trouble. You know, we could get sued. We could, yeah. we could if, if we let people drink out of the water fountains, uh, you know, maybe we don't think the threat is actually nearly as deadly as everybody's making it out to be. But, you know, if we let them drink from the water fountains, well, then they're going to do it. And then if somebody gets COVID, then it's going to be a problem for us. And so that's just the way we operate that way so um, often and so routinely without thinking that, boy, if the governor comes and says, you know, this, then then we're just obeying the authorities. We're mm-hmm. just obeying the authorities. And it takes courage to actually say, no, we're gonna actually going to think about this and we're going to try to you know, try to help people to live as free people. I, I went to a, there's a light show here in Cape Coral. Uh, one of the guys just at his house, he's got like everything decked out, you know, and uh, I don't know if he's a military vet or not, but he's got this whole uh, honor the vets at the beginning with the American flag and all this stuff. And he's got this uh, deal that he does at the beginning, you know, we should be grateful for the, for the service. I'm like, yeah, hey man, you know, and he's talking about, you got flashes up there and I think he plays um, the national anthem or something like that. And one of the things like, He's like, I'm not going to say anything about masking or social distancing because you're all good people who have common sense. I'm sure that you'll know what to do. You know, I was like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, man, I want that guy for president. Can we just have that guy? And so that spirit, um, mm-hmm. that spirit is gone. And it's it's exposed not only, it's not only, because my point is, we're not only dealing with uh, inaccurate political theology. We are we are dealing with right. that. We're also dealing with a whole cultural malaise. Like in, in many places, there hasn't had to be any kind of government um, policing because, as we've heard for, through the media, there's 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 individual policing. Right. You'll go where there's no mandate, but people are operating in the exact same ways as where there is a mandate, and the ways they're operating are not uh, wise. Right. So. I think related to this is one of the things we've fallen short on in the Christian community is uh, teleology. There, we've been exposed as having no understanding of what we're driving at, what we're trying to see accomplished, the, the Great Commission, to see the Word of God made known. And it's been, we, we've too quickly backed down from that obligation mm-hmm. to go proclaim the truth. And it's been evidenced by the kind of the breaking down of churches quickly, yeah. the not meeting of churches still that we're experiencing in certain parts of the land. And it's, it, We've talked about this a lot, but man, we've been exposed for not understanding the relationship of God's law to God's gospel. And so the evaluation of what has happened, we've heard this from theologians at Southeastern Seminary. We've heard it from uh, uh, church planters and North American Mission Board. We've heard it in articles that have been written at TGC and other places where the, the idea is, well, we need to look at the rioting and just not asked so much, you know, what they are doing, but why are they doing it? And MLK has been quoted that rioting is the uh, voice of the unheard. And so we need to, we need to listen. We realize the only reason they're stealing TVs out of Target is because they've not been heard. And so we need to hear them. Then we can tell them the good news. If we let them know and assure them that we're hearing them. And it's just so fundamentally wrong. We don't understand the doctrine of sin. We don't understand God's law. We don't really understand the gospel and how the gospel works. And that's been exposed and it grieves me because even good people have made stupid, stupid comments about these things, leaving God's people, if they follow their comments, to uh, just kind of roll over and say, okay, well, I can't say anything to you. I can't tell you thou shalt not steal because you've never been heard before. And I just need to listen to you and let you go ahead and steal and not warn you that what you're doing is actually not just against Target or not just against the people whose houses you're burning down. It's against the God who created you. Mm. So we've got that. And then we've got pastors who, uh, you know, have said that they've decried certain expressions of uh, of of wrong ideologies, so they they decried rightly alt right and white supremacy and white supremacist movements, who have gone out and marched with protests that have held up the banner of Black Lives Matter, which is a Marxist organization. These are pastors, evangelical pastors. So I look at that man, and you know, I'm I'm saddened by it, and it it has exposed the superficiality of much that goes on in the name of Christianity in America today. And it really, you know, doesn't drive me into a cave to just sit down and cry somewhere. What it does is it it calls me to action. It makes me aware that we've got to do a better job. 
Uh, mm-hmm. We need to work more diligently. We yeah. need to be more determined to set forth the truth of God's law and the truth of his gospel and not back up. I mean, this is the time to charge. This is the time to advance, right. not to retreat. Yeah, and those, those, those um, attacks and attempts to shut down the work of Christ on earth um, are going to come in various ways, and they're going to be quite sneaky. It's kind of like a Nehemiah 6 situation. So Nehemiah is building, right? And then uh, Sanballat and Tobias, Tobias yeah. they come, and, and they're doing all kinds of manipulative tactics. So they're lying to him, mm-hmm. right? They're bearing false witness about him. They're the threatening thing, him. They're, we're trying to make him afraid. All sorts of maneuvers, and those maneuvers are going to come. And Again, we're living in such an interesting time, such tumultuous times, that Christians aren't exactly prepared for this. We're not very good at standing against false accusation. Like we're just, the Christians in America aren't, aren't, aren't great at that. So there's going to be false charges that come upon you. And the tendency is to be like, because we're, we, we want to be humble, and a lot of Christians are humble, that they get manipulated. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I mean, I didn't do it all just exactly right. And, uh, you know, uh, Nehemiah, while, while we're not trying to rebel, um, I mean, we would try to fight if they came and attacked us, which is maybe kind of like rebellion. And so maybe they're right. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. You, so we're going to have to be like Nehemiah. Say, I'm doing a good work. I can't come down. I can't come down. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, Joe Biden tweeted um, to all to all of those to all of those who are hurting. Um, don't worry, help is on the way. You know, and it just felt like the um, the um, helicopter person in the community that's always knocking on your door. You know, and no one's excited that he showed up because no one wants his help, and his help never helps. It always hurts, and mm-hmm. so it's just like wave to Joe. No, Joe, we're okay. Like all the all, all the Christians, I, I think I retweet all Christians say in one voice. No, Joe, we're really everybody's fine. Thanks so much for offering. We really appreciate it. Bye bye now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the guy that shows up to a fire with a bucket of gasoline, you know, say, I'm here to help. Yes. Yeah. So moving on the next year, let's, yeah. we've reflected. What What well, is the Christian community going to need as we navigate the next 365 days? Well, listen, this conversation is what ultimately, and, and we've been having it for years, but it was... Uh, it was put on warp speed over the last 12 months. This conversation is what's given rise to the announcement of the Institute of uh, Public Theology. I mean, that's why we are doing this, because we want to see in this institute the kind of training that we believe will be essential going forward, where Christians and especially pastors are trained to think in terms of worldview. What does the Bible tell us to, to see when we wake up every morning and look out over the landscape? Well, this is God's world. He created it. He sent his son into the world to redeem, and that son rules and reigns, and we are his ambassadors. And what does that mean? How do we live as ambassadors of Christ when we're on the job site, when we're in the uh, boardroom, when you're in the classroom, whenever you're in private? And you know, what does it mean? So So one thing we desperately need is to understand how the word of God applies to every aspect of life. So marriage isn't out from under God's dominion and God's prescription. Uh, Singleness isn't out from under God's prescription. Parenting, uh, handling your money, earning money, saving money, giving money, spending money, all of that is under the Lordship of Christ. And what we've got to recapture, uh, and the, the sooner the better, is the understanding of what it means simply to say, Jesus Christ is Lord, I'm his slave. Amen. Amen. Well, certainly courage will be required as we venture out upon another year. Um, and we have that courage by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who has come for us, who is our Savior. The very same God who led us through 2020 Mm. will lead us through 2021. And we need to take God at his word, consider all that he's revealed to us. And it's our hope, our resolve, that God would use this Institute of Public Theology, this area. He'd use the Wield Sword Project that we produce that is very much along the same lines. And uh, just all the articles and books that are being published through Founders. We're very grateful to those who have supported us in the year 2020. And uh, again, we hope that you're able to join us for this conference coming up uh, very soon now. We're very excited about it. a wonderful time of fellowship and time of uh, worship and hearing God's word in January as we launch out upon a new year. So thanks so much for listening to The Sword and the Trowel and have a happy happy new New Year. year.